16 personality types, 2 subtypes each, 32 subtypes in total. Hello, today I'm going to talk about the subtype theory overview very quickly, then move to a 32 video examples to prove the theory correct and help pinpoint how to spot these kind of personalities in real life yourself. So we'll just dive in right away. So the subtype theory that I've been using for my past videos are taken from Valentina Megegd and Anatoly Ovkorov, and these are two socionic researchers who live in Kiev, Ukraine. Socionics, as a reminder, is Myers Bridge 2.0 that ups the scales by going with a deeper analysis of the eight cognitive functions and coming up with even interpersonal relationship uh, theories. But just to keep it simple, I'm going to talk about the subtype theory, and the subtype theory is that these two have created short, concise, concise paragraphs for each personalities and two for each one, and this has been one of the best theories I have discovered for Myers-Briggs and Socionic fans out there. So I'm highly recommending it today, and I'm even going to provide you with a quick overview model of how to use it. So just as a reminder, if you're a Myers-Briggs fan, I convert, you gotta convert your, if you're introverts, gotta convert your introverts J's to P's for socionics. And I use socionics for the course of this video because it's what my preference over time as I grew over using it and I just changed it over time. But just overall, if you're Myers Bridge, just switch to J's to P's for introverts. Now, just as a simple overview, the shortcuts that I've come up with today is that in this model, there is basically key words of description to understand the person's personality and these key words is what I have found for each of the paragraphs that these Megeg and Ofkorov have written. So the model right here is what you see in front of you and these are the key words you look for for looking for specific subtypes and this has been one of the best descriptions I have found out um, when trying to figure out a person's personality and I'm going to prove it after with the videos but just as a timbits or some caveats there will always be problems and mistakes with these kind of theories. And the problem and mistakes is, the big one is that there's co-variation. And this is a big problem even I have today. That being said, that we all make mistakes when typing people. I make mistakes and you'll probably make mistakes too. But I think our willingness to try and find the truth of a person's personality will make us better typers and understanding a person's Myers-Briggs or Socionics characteristics. So an issue is covariation. Covariation exists when one personality could be actually another one. And this has been an issue that people have pinpointed and I think that's reasonable. But that's why from the description that these two have come up with, I've looked for the key keywords to look for. And these are the keywords you look for for each of the subtypes. And these subtypes descriptions will help pinpoint them much more eloquently for you as a hub for myself. But of all things become difficult, if covariation is an issue for you, you go by the basis of uh, letter by letter, which is a classic model of figuring out a person's personality. So you see if a person is introvert or extrovert. So introverts tend to be more calm, talk slowly, more reserved, while extroverts tend to be more outgoing, more expressive. Uh, if there is someone's a sensor or intuitive, a sensor being someone who's practical, more concrete, while someone intuitive is more big picture, imaginative, and more abstract oriented. And if someone's a thinker or a feeler, you know, thinkers tend to be more logical, concrete, uh, more practical and calculative in their approach, while feelers tend to be more imaginative, uh, more um, emotionally expressive or more tuned to their emotions and understanding the world and other people around, more tuned to human behaviors, I would say. And so look for vocabulary in that regard. So that aside, um, those are the timbits for using the subtype model, but overall this is the best model descriptions I have taken from their theory, and these are the keywords that I do. So anytime I see a person's personality, I say, okay, if they're this personality, do they fit this model description? And usually I kind of make it easy in that way to do so, but overall, um, I do leave with the 32 video examples and with the descriptions of the subtypes for each of them. But if you need more examples, please check out my other videos with the subtype series and you'll get more deep elaborate descriptions for each of them, but you'll also see more video examples to pinpoint them. So in any event, I hope you guys enjoyed these uh, this video and the other videos I made because I enjoyed them myself. I'm glad to share them. And if you need any help or in other regards, um, feel free to let me know. But in any sense, here's the subtype examples and I hope you guys like it. Our commitment to Africa is clear. The First Lady had a very successful level visit um, just this past year. 
I am here now reinforcing the fact that our relationship with the continent is strong and growing. Um, Ambassador Bolton has made very clear that he is intending in the coming months to roll out a new initiative focused on increasing our security and trading relationship with Africa. And we brought a bipartisan code out of senators and, and members of Congress here to underscore our commitment. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. Those people can express themselves yeah. as they'd like to. But, um, you know, I said in my speech that we could measure the readiness of Donald Trump to be president in part by how he responded to my speech, whether it be on policy or whether it would be a, a, a personal attack. And uh, characteristically, he took the low road. Yeah. Um, th there's been some negative reaction of Rush Limbaugh. I'm about to be president. Okay. Going for was, hey, when you land on this channel, all of a sudden you're going to see a handful of videos that all represent kind of the spectrum of things that you can expect from this channel. You want to kind of optimize for what people are already interested mm -hmm. in, what they're watching, you know. And so by throwing things into the mix that kind of break up that watch session or that that quote unquote lean back experience, Oof. right? I, Oof. Yeah. All of a sudden, I am creating friction with yeah. the viewer, and they're going to leave the channel. It makes total. We've got plenty of Earth-like planets, and the total catalog of planets ever discovered now is more than 3,000. So what makes Proxima b interesting is that it's an Earth-like planet orbiting the nearest star to the sun. Which is where? Uh, out the Alpha Centauri system. So that's a multiple planet. <laughs> it's a multiple star system. How far you've, away? Heard of, you've heard of Alpha. We've all heard of Alpha Centauri. Some of us have heard of Alpha Centauri. But it's about four light years away. A what? beam of light would take about four years to reach it. And so it's the nearest planet. So you're gonna, if you're going to go to planets and you're going to rank them by the one you want to visit first, it'd be Proxima. It was a good performance with a very good opponent because uh, this guy has only one fight in UFC today here, his debut. But I think he's a very good fighter. And I think he's, for his next fight, he's going to show this. Islam feeling good right now. Most important is win. Today he wins, show very good performance. Like crowd, love this fight. And um, <clears throat> next fight, I think he have to fight top 15. Yeah. So I'm ready to throw an elbow just like the next person in New York City. So looks, I'd probably get like, <laughs> jerk. But um, you mean popularity, like yeah. do people recognize me? Yeah, or what would they say to you? I don't know. I, I don't really get a ton of that. I, I mostly, I think I get a lot of this. Like people walk and they walk by me and then they go. And they look at my butt. They look at you. <laughs> I think that it's like that delayed reaction out of place. And I'm a lot smaller than people think that's I would true. be. And um, I think, you know, in military terms, that's not true. Um, the uh, United States president remains the strongest in the world in that respect. But in terms of power at home, uh, and sort of an expansive policy, I think you could make that case. Do you make that? It describes this uh, uh, trap, and, and I think that um, there is no geostrategic reason for the United States and China to be adversaries. Competitors, yes. Rivals, probably. But adversaries, I don't think so. But Today, uh, either in terms of the raw computational power we apply to it, um, how many years we've been doing it, or if you benchmark it in terms of any quality metrics. So if you take, uh, you know, if you take, for example, any kind of conversational, uh, you know, conversations you have with Google, our ability to answer uh, questions at scale globally uh, in depth, for example, the ability to have a follow-on conversation. Right. Those are the areas where the difference really shows through. So we've been doing this for a long time. And, you know, for me, people have been asking questions to Google for a long time, and with voice, you know, we, we saw the trend too. And today, I do on the evening news to cover the average uh, well, major act of a president during that particular day. There's a more extensive coverage of, of international crises, and, and on occasion, there's some uh, in-depth analysis of the news. But uh, yes, I think so. And 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 the press is inherently uh, responding to the public's interest not in achievements but failures, not in cooperation but disagreements, uh, not in consistency but inconsistency, uh, not in uh, successes but mistakes. So I, I think the... the and they were determined to do it. They built a Congress and now we have 535 people. We have courts that will strike down the president's uh, decrees. We, uh, we have governors, by the way, 50 mm -hmm. of them, and state legislatures. And uh, I think our president today uh, is learning that those constraints are real 
that whatever you say in an election campaign, those constraints are going to be there. And by the way, this is a president who has never even sniffed government before, He'd never been a part of government. And so maybe it was a bit of a surprise that you have all of these independent power centers. It's, it's not like running a he company. He says it's harder than... Is even they as children grew up being indoctrinated. They grew up in, a, in a violence. They grew up in war. Uh, they grew up in very ignorant cultures where they didn't learn about the outside world. And one thing we do is hire former Taliban to teach in our schools. It might sound a little bit controversial, but what's interesting is most of those men got out of the Taliban because their mother said, what you're doing is not a good thing. It's not in the name of Islam. It was their mothers who told them that. And they've become now our greatest advocates for education. Steel, I think the reason that the, that the public was turned on by it was that the book deals with perhaps the most obvious question about human history, why history unfolded differently for different peoples, why it is that Europeans conquered the New World instead of Native Americans conquering Europe, why Europeans brought slaves to the New World. And all of us are interested in these questions. It's past religion and part a political philosophy. And that if you focus only on the religious part, praying, fasting, you know, there how you see nothing but peace. I don't see anything but peace. Right. If people want to pray and fast and be together peacefully, you know, have their rituals, I don't, I think that's protected and I don't think that that necessarily leads to any kind of violence. You may it's funny that he says that because he's also said on the record to journalists that when he looks around, the sky is not falling. The NSA's operations have not been significantly hindered and they're still very much in business. Moreover, we know for a fact at this point that the Paris attackers were not using encrypted communications and in fact were using simple burner phones of the type that drug dealers were using back in the 1990s. Agree with him in that regard? What I will say is this, whenever we're talking about damage without evidence, uh, this is an intentional effort to change the conversation from the concrete harms of these programs that violated the rights of every man, woman, and child in the United States and people around the world, and instead talk about the theoretical risks of journalism. That's the country, Anderson, where they live, those who, if you go by the, the tally of those who don't pay income taxes, the darker the state, the higher the percentage of people in that state that don't pay income taxes. Uh, you see a lot out in Idaho, uh, that's a Republican state, a decent amount in Utah. You come across here, you have some southern states, and look, a lot of this is done by poverty. And so, yes, there are seniors. The Republicans tend to carry the senior vote. Governor Romney leads at the moment. There are veterans, as you noted, a very key constituency if you're looking at states like Virginia and North Carolina. There are downscale white voters critical to the Republican coalition in places like West Virginia, in places like Southern Ohio. Extreme, hardline, kind of Hindu nationalist background, something called the RSS. This was the organization, one of whose members uh, shot Mahatma Gandhi um, in 1948. So it has a, a long past of having been fairly tough on minorities, uh, particularly the Muslim minority in India. 2002, Modi was the head of the government of Gujarat, one of the states in India. There were riots. Uh, and in those riots, a thousand Muslims died. And I played this game so hard, and I like never stopped thinking, I never stopped like planning, plotting, and I'm just so happy that it paid off. You know, what's your if you're talking about a strong player? Sure, I mean, if you're looking at me, I wouldn't say I'm the strongest physical competitor, but I honestly feel like I was one of the strongest mental competitors in the house. I think the fact that I was able to play almost every side of the house and never go detected is a big is a big testament to what a strong game that I played and what an aggressive game that I played, even though it was kind of covert. I because I, I, I just tell my my people the truth of what I'm doing, so they go, what are you doing? And I'm like, I need to nap. <laughs> and then I realized yeah. Trump is smart. He's like, you call it executive time. It makes you seem important. What are you doing? It's executive time. I'd like, I'll, I'll have to whisper to my assistant. She'd be like, hey, I need you. And then I'll be like, I need, I need to go poo. <laughs> and then she's like, okay, I'll just tell people you're busy. But now I'll just be like, it's executive time. Yeah. I'll be like, is that why your office smells like, this is executive time. <laughs> it sounds epic. Yes. Then some turbulence is come. <laughs> then some. Some water come from here. <laughs> oh, one time, uh, the short distance from Rajasthan to Delhi, yeah. short flight, I think 30 minutes. Hmm? Uh, one, uh, one, one passenger, and I think Spanish or something. Uh, then I, I mentioned uh, 
sometimes the, the turbulence is happen. Something could come from uh, come come here, come from here. Sweat. Oh, sweat, mm -hmm. sweat. Oh. Mm -hmm. Then he also is quietly mentioned. He also have the same experience. <laughs> 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 Nowadays, not much. The probe tell you, but I don't know. Nobody knows because the readers themselves are going to vote. See what it is. The oh, the readers can call up yeah. and say. No, no, they don't call. They have to literally vote. There are going to be ballots in the books. The books are going to be published uh, December, January, February, and March. In December, we introduce everything and we learn how the Marvel Universe comes in contact with the DC world, whatever it is. <laughs> or MSNBC or whatnot, or Fox. Um, and then by the time it got on our show, which uh, a lot of times was very late night, um, it was old news. And it was frustrating because we were breaking a lot of stories then, but we weren't monetizing it. What started to look appealing was that if you could create a news operation that wasn't constrained by time periods, publishing cycles, that when you get it right, you get it up, um, you would have a huge advantage. And if you were good and if you were thorough and accurate, you could win. In the end, something that I didn't get to finish on my terms. I want to be inside the octagon again, and I want to be inside the octagon healthy. I want to be inside the octagon under my terms. When I was inside the octagon my last few fights, I believe I wasn't uh, the, the man that I needed to be. I was faking it. I was faking it uh, just to be in there. I was fake. Hi, well, I'm Kara, obviously. I am from Florida originally. Um, I live here in Los Angeles now. I'm 29, and I am a model. So what uh, well, I've been a big fan of the show for a while. My sister watched the show, and she kind of got me into the show. Um, I started watching the end of season seven, and that kind of just got me hooked. And I have not missed an episode from season eight on. So I'm just a huge fan, so I just, I just wanted to do it. She goes, um, I definitely, I think you kind of have to play both. You have to be good at the competitions, and you... Um, I'm totally blanking now, but you have to be have a play a good social game too. I think you have to have a little bit of both for sure. Four years. Secondly, I, I think you have to take the man for his word that he wants to unify the country, and we'll see whether he's able to do so. It's hard to unify the country though, with the news media uh, being so s split up. When I was president, uh, you know, you mattered a lot more because there was like three of you, and uh, and now there's all kinds of uh, information being bombarded out and people can say things anonymously and it's just a, it's just a different world well, you bring me to indispensable to democracy uh that we need an independent media to hold uh, people like me to account i mean power can be very addictive and it can be uh, corrosive and uh it's important for the media to uh, call to account people who abuse their power. I, and it's a very specific drunk, too. It's not just like every time I'm drunk, I turn into this, ga you know, I, I think she's like some sort of like tortoise gambler or something. Like, I don't, I don't always turn into this masculine alter ego that like jumps into shark, shark ridden waters just to make my friends laugh. My friends were like, that's like too far, Jen. Like, no, not funny. It's not every time. I think it might be rum, which is what I brought up. <laughs> to Colbert, because the only time I drink rum is on vacation. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then we pull up and he's like, and this is where the fishermen clean all the, all the fish out. You know, so there's all these sharks here. And I was like, sack! I just jumped <laughs> in. And everyone's like, somebody get her some water and coffee. She's uh, gonna die. Wow. Um, Actually, first a big phenomenon in Asia, uh, and then we we're like, why not? Let's bring it over here. Let's do something different. It's a, it's like a singing version of Dancing with the Stars, I guess, if you will, but with with big elaborate masks on. Yeah. And you mentioned it. <laughs> we did. We watched a lot of them, and we we're like, oh, what? <laughs> What's going on? And it was it was fun. I think there's a really epic clip of Ryan Reynolds. He was uh, promoting Deadpool, and he was on the show singing like tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> or something and no one knew it was it was him and so when he was revealed it was really hilarious the reactions yeah and she's at the top of my call list and i have fat cheeks and i keep accidentally calling her when i smile during other phone calls oh wow <laughs> and then i don't say anything and i hang up which is really rude but it's been like 300 times i think like, oh, it's wow. a lot 300 times so i apologize and then i i think i've facetimed jen aniston 
uh, on accident too from my bed. So wow, <laughs> rarely you construct. I, the only thing I get, I get so sort of in the center of the experience. You know, it's very hard to step out into the audience and look at it on the screen the way an audience for the first time would see it on the screen. But I, I can certainly tell we're, we were chasing current events. And even though the story takes place, you know, in 1971, 1971 seems, when you look back at it, to be a current event again mm. in, in, in terms of the media, the news journalism coming under attack, you know, uh, by the administration. Whenever they don't like something, you know, they label it, let's say, fake news, or if they don't agree with something, they call it, well, that's, you know, we have our own alternative facts. John, by a, a long measure. This is an effort to subvert the administration of President Donald Trump. It is nothing less. It is an effort by the deep state to roll over a duly elected president and a legitimate government and to, to break the will of the American people. This is no longer uh, about Republicans and Democrats, conservatives and liberals. This is about a full-on assault by the left, the Democratic Party, to absolutely carry out a coup d'etat against President Trump. We can, uh, you know, let loose a little bit. We're in that busy time where now it's probably every, some, you know, every night there's something for the next two weeks until uh, the actual holidays, which we're looking forward to just to get a little one-on-one -on -one time with the family that we don't get as much of uh, these days. Uh, you know, it's, it's nice to probably be able to see my father when he's, you know, never stepping away, but in a little bit more relaxed environment than, let's say, the White House when something major is going on. So uh, we're very excited about it and really looking forward to it. And are you a crack addict? No, I don't smoke crack, and I'm not a crack addict. Have I? Yes, I have. So that's what, I didn't lie. I don't, I don't smoke crack. I haven't uh, smoked crack in over a year. But, but did I? But, but that's semantics, oh, man. Come on. It's totally semantic. is semantics. It's typical media. You guys are the same. You're all cut from the same cloth. As the mayor, I look at myself as just a normal, regular person. All these rich elitist people, I'm sick of them. I'm sick of them. They're sewers and they don't know. They're perfect. They don't do nothing. Get out of here. They don't do nothing. They're the biggest crooks around. Um, I really, really loved Reagan. Mm, um, Reagan too. was one of my favorites. Brittany, anybody that gets in the diary room and makes me laugh mm -hmm. is is one of my favorite characters. So for, for for that, I love you know I love the show. So those are some of my favorites. Least favorites would kind of be Rachel. She kind of would be aggravating me a little, needy, <laughs> clingy, cryy. Um, so she was kind of annoying to me for sure. Dan, Boogie, you know, but I'm pretty sure in real life they're good people. 